I have a random story about an old lady. What have you been doing to old ladies? It's what they've been doing. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Be careful how you phrase that. Yeah. Well, actually, on the subject of political incorrectness, it's people of a certain generation can still get away with it because they weren't as tolerant as we were. So this is kind of an example of that. You're saying that old people get away with being racist and so on because it's fine because it because they were like they were brought up in different times. But this is this is kind of racist. But I was in the supermarket. Uh, I was at the packed dried fruit bit, and there was this old lady, just sort of like say two meters away from me, and she picked up a packet of dates, and then all of a sudden she burst out laughing, and I was kind of like, what's going on there? And she called her husband over. And then she pointed at a packet of dates she was holding, and then they both started laughing. Right. And they must have, like, saw me with a, what the hell, kind of expression, because then she came over to me, and she said, have you seen this? And she gave me the packet of dates, and pointed on it, and it said that they were from Iran. And then she giggled and said, I hope they didn't put a bomb in it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... It's like, how, 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 why did you think that was okay to say? <laughs> it's just like she, <laughs> you wonder if she checked like the packaging for you know like a, an iPhone or something. Oh, this came from China. I hope they didn't ship it with SARS. <laughs> I mean, what? I don't think everyone in Iran is a terrorist, but even if they were, I don't think their primary target would be putting bombs in packets of dates. <laughs> I'll slip right past custom. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, don't give them ideas. Would lose a because generation because then, because overnight. then, then you could just you could eat the evidence, and then because it's dates and they go right through you, it would just pass out the other side, and you wouldn't have a problem. That's genius. You aren't giving them ideas, are you? <laughs> Maybe. No, that's implying that people listening to this are terrorists, but you could be. Better not add. So, so you spend your time in supermarkets talking to old ladies. That's that's the sort of gist that I'm getting from here. This. I didn't instigate the conversation, but it just ended up confirming to me that old people are racist. You didn't like stand there and like rub your nipples or anything. <laughs> no, I didn't try to entice her over doing anything like that. Hey, baby, want to try some dates? That's disgusting. Yeah, it is. Hello and welcome to the Brain Go Hearty Gaming Podcast. We are in season two now. It's all shiny and brand new and stuff and thing and everything's better and fantastic and stuff. We're still calling this 22, not one. Uh, no, okay, right. We'll call it episode 22, a new podcast. Yes, season two, episode one, episode 22. Yeah, just to confuse the fuck out of everybody. Mm. I'm Blighty, he's Flick. We sit here mm. and talk about shite. In case you haven't in gaming haven't listened to the last twenty one podcasts, that's how things roll. The first few minutes is always nonsense. Yeah, so now we're on Podbean. Yeah. Hello Which, Podbean. Hello. We're not sure how good it is yet, but we'll find out shortly, I guess. Yeah, it can't be any worse. No, it can't get worse. We have already looked at some of the, the background bits and pieces and um they're all much yeah. much much better. So hopefully once the whole iTunes thing is, you know, nicely leveled out, everything will be fantastic. Hopefully. So shall we get started with our first usual call of business? The call of, what the fuck is with the call of business? I, I don't know why I always call it that, but I do. Call of business isn't a real term either. <laughs> you just make things up. It's, no, it's because I don't want to say call of duty. Oh. That's why. First order of business is the term you're looking for. Anyway, yeah. I so call. We, we, <laughs> we usually start off with the, the games that we've been playing over the course of the last yeah. fortnight. So, but it's the last three weeks now. Yeah, yeah okay, it's, it's been the last... Yeah. Hmm. should also find out there's going to be a general theme that some of the stuff we'll cover might be two weeks old now, but we're still going to mention things because there's things that need saying. That's right, just confuse the fuck out of everybody because I've just... Yeah. Yeah, go on, fine, whatever. But we're, yeah, we're, this, this section is... Carry on, it's just... Ah, oh, my head hurts! <laughs> So what have you been playing other than the week you were away on holiday playing with snowboards, Mono? Oh, play with snow. Um, not an awful lot, really. We've been getting back into Team Fortress uh, lately. Well, that, just, yeah, that's since you got back, though. You're going in reverse order. Oh, am I? Um, yeah. 
before we went. No, it was Team Fortress before I went on holiday too. Was it? Yeah, we didn't really play any Old Republic. I played a little bit of Dreadmore, still haven't managed to kill him. Um, I was going to propose a new section to the podcast where we ask, have you finished Dungeons of Dreadmore yet? No, but to be fair, I haven't played all that much. Um, no, and you do die a lot. Yeah. Uh, I didn't actually play my PSP while I was on holiday either at all, really. I, I mean, I watched movies when I was, you know, on the flight. Movies aren't games, move on. Exactly. Uh, no, I haven't really been playing much on my phone because it's playing silly buggers lately with the battery. I've been playing um, this sort of cartoon wars thing, which is kind of like tower defense, but not tower defense. Hard to explain. It's all right. You know, it passes the time. It's hard to explain, so you're not going to bother. Just No, exactly. If, it's, if something's too difficult, I just don't give a fuck. I won't bother. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. Did we do any Saints Row 3 before you went away on holiday? We did a little bit of Saints Row 3. Just, yeah, we haven't really done that much of it. No, I haven't really. We've, yeah, we've been preoccupied. Could always do more of that after this. Yeah, I've still got Mass Effect 2 as a start at some point as well. That don't bother. Just... Yeah. So, all in all, I haven't really been playing that much, but it's it's weird that we're getting back into Team Fortress because, like, I think we left it for a while, and you go mm. back and it's not too bad, like, the things that annoyed you, you know, <laughs> it takes a while for them to work their way back in, but... Yeah. Uh, and for anybody that doesn't... You... Oh, well, carry on, yeah, you're about to For anyone it. that doesn't know, it's, you know, it's free, you just need to get Steam and download it, and it's it's good fun, and hopefully if we get enough people in the Steam group, we will maybe get a, you know, a games night going and like you were saying if you leave it for a little while and come back unannoyed by the things that used to annoy you but then it slowly starts to build up again everybody wanting to be sniper and spy even though they're terrible at it nobody bothering to change to the class that would help you win yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't always happen not every so no not always but but it does you can usually see when your team's getting steamrolled there's this if you look at the you know the the team makeup. You can always see why you're getting. You can spies. understand why usually, yeah. Yeah, like if yes, the we're... enemy's like flying spies out left, right, and center, and you've got no pyros on your team, you you kind of know that it's it's going to end badly. And then you also get annoyed at the new weapons they've added, which are overpowered. That if you want immediately, you have to buy, of course, because it's pay to win. Yep, pay to win. Mm. So we've been playing that with not just CR Maz and um, that American woman that has appalling sense in games. Cat. Case rather, yeah. <laughs> We played with Noodles as well. Yes, Noodles. He joined us last night. And that um, that person I haven't met yet. Road Crew Worker. Walking... Road oh. Crew Worker. I knew there was an R in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Noodles kept trying to backstab me. He he was saying to me afterwards that like he hasn't played all that much and stuff. And Medic is one of the things that he feels that he plays well. And that's a good thing because you need Medic. So... <laughs> Um, Way back when we, like, I only started playing Team Fortress 2 when we were doing these podcasts yeah. early on, you predicted which class I would find best and you got it right. Because you thought I would suit Sniper and I do. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't say you'd suit Sniper. I said that you would like Sniper. Well, there's a difference. <laughs> okay, well, as it turns out, I like it and I'm also very good at it. And... I, 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 I switch classes all the time. Like we've gone through this before when it comes yes. to like MMOs and things. I find it very difficult to settle on one thing constantly. Yeah, which is why you haven't touched Skyrim. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Still need to go back and do that and stuff, yeah. So what have you been playing then? I've probably been playing quite a lot over the past three weeks, but the chances of me remembering all are slim to none. Would it be easier if we had a list of what you haven't been playing? In some cases, yes, but I'm going to try and remember. Okay. Team Fortress 2. Obviously, uh, this guy for just the DLC. Okay. Um, oh, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe I almost forgot that when it was one of the main things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so yeah, I got that. I also handled the review for Critical Gamer. Um, going to be spoiler free, obviously, because you haven't played it. No. But uh, although I enjoyed it, and I thought it was quite good, I thought it was overpriced, and I didn't like the direction they took the gameplay. Oh. That's ignoring the, the arcade mode. That's fine. That's for people who want it. Would have yeah. been a lot better if it was co-op. It would have been really good if it was co-op, in fact. But just the pure the pure story mode, they've changed to a type of horror that I don't like. I really liked the horror in the first one. Right, okay. Because there's... Uh, the way I described it in the review was they went from like a classic slasher movie set in the middle of nowhere to mm. something like From Dust Till Dawn. 
Where it's, oh, right, it's a right. top gratuitous type style. Yeah, yeah. You're taking on things with a nail gun in American Nightmare. And that's not a shift I wanted, really. It's not bad, it's just different and not my preferred taste. Well, we'll just have to see whether or not, you know, if, if it's garnered any success for them, then they can bring out a, you know, a proper sort of, not mm. sequel, but, you know, a proper continuation of the story. It, it does say after the credits that Alan Wake's, what, you know, what's that sentence that they always did for Max Payne? His journey into the night will continue. It yeah, says yeah. There, there is at least a, at least another DLC or or a game, anyway, on the way as well. And the PC version of the first game is out now, so everybody should go play it. And there's an interesting fact that originally it started life as a PC game, disappeared for a few years, then at E3 suddenly it was an Xbox exclusive. Yeah. And the reason Remedy switched, I think money probably had to do with it, but also they were scared of piracy. All but right. within 48 hours of the PC version coming out, it had paid for itself. Yeah. <laughs> so Go they figure. misjudged. Is yeah. that on Steam? I think so, yeah. Because it might be quite you know, a good thing to pay attention to that if it comes out on one of the sales or something. Because you know, every other podcast I go on about how great Alan Wake is and so on. And yeah, and go buy it. Like, people like Cat disagree. Yeah, well, we'll not pay too much <laughs> no, we attention won't, we to We won't that. start another argument about that until we're on TF2 again. <laughs> every supposed- fucking night, I just have to listen to you guys arguing about... <laughs> About uh, just yeah, move on, move on. Yeah, but I can't. No, okay. So we'll. we'll I'm going to be playing the PC version of Alan Wake because I'm handling the review, so my review copy's on the way. Apparently, it comes with a lot of nice fancy extras as well. That even the special edition of the console didn't. Oh. So that'll be for nice soundtrack and that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah, but I'm not sure. It's going to be quite difficult to write another review on it. Although it's kind You'll of. You probably just have to think about it in terms of it being a like not a port, but in terms mm. of the way that it, it, it handles. I mean, if there's already been a review of the Xbox version, you won't need to review like the, the game concept and stuff. So, oh yeah, there was. I I did the review exactly. Of the so it's the so problem. The the point is, is that you would then have to focus on do you like. Get the, it with hindsight, though. Do you play it like? Do I have to imagine this is the first time, or do I compare it? That's the the tricksy thing. Well. Just to take a crack at it and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I don't review things. Just take, just take the science route to doing things. Throw I, a lot of shit at a wall and then pick the thing that sticks. Exactly. I like that. It's a good mm. analogy. I always have this image of like a wall covered in shit. No, carry on. Move on. <laughs> Actually, the perfect analogy for science is a scientist punching a dog in front of a wall covered in shit. <laughs> to me. You're yeah. not right in the head. <laughs> I think that's wrapped up Alan Wake anyway. Um, if you're interested... Alan Wake punching a dog in front of a wall covered in shit. It's really annoying when the name of a game is a name of a person. When you're writing a, view, a review especially, because then I have to keep on switching between what I refer to when I'm talking about the character and what they go through, or if I'm talking about the game. Cause, yeah. Because then you find weird sentences, like, I don't know, like, uh, Alan Wake was better on a console. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, confusion. Yeah. yeah. So what else have you been playing? Let's see. I'm deliberately avoiding the obvious thing that I'm playing right now. And I've been uploading copious amounts of videos off to YouTube. Are you going to bother mentioning it? or just? Yeah, yeah, I'll mention it because I did want to talk about it. Um, it's the Naruto Ninja Storm's Generations, which is... It's not a proper sequel to Storm 2. It's just got a much bigger cast, essentially. So it's kind of like a Capcom in the sense that they've added stuff. More people's. It's a bit on the cheap because they've done away with a proper story mode. There's no free roam like there was in Storm 2. There's no story mode? Well, there is, but it's like still images and talking and then it's just one battle to the next. Whereas in Storm 2, you had free roam. Is it like a continuation? Like, Does it follow the actual main plot or...? Yeah, it follows all the plots, like because it has all the younger characters as well. It starts at the very start. Oh, right, okay. That's a bit strange. Yeah, and it goes further than Storm 2 did, but as I say, it doesn't present it in as good a way. And people keep on asking in the videos, is it better, is it better? Because everybody asks that, even if they don't care what your opinion is on it. <laughs> uh, I would say that it's not better. Storm 2 is better as a game, but if you want more characters, then that is better. In fact, it's out in America... Tuesday, and it's out here at the end of the month. I think that's about it. I've, other than some miscellaneous playing of, I went back to Tactics Ogre on the PSP now and then. 
just for the lulls. I never got through it, so I've kind of been concentrating. It's because I played the original, so it's not like I've never. Yeah, seen you weren't it. desperate to get yeah having through it. All. And I've been playing that Super Mario 3DS game as well. Don't you can never remember the name of? I do remember, but only if I look over my shoulder and read it out. Super Mario 3D. That's Black. not remembering. That's reading. That's remembering to read. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm in a no bullshit mood today. Oh, that's that's dangerous then, considering that we've got Mass Effect Three and whatnot to talk about later. Yeah, I, I was I was heavily intoxicated last night, so this this morning I haven't been rough, but certain things have been like. Well, At just, least you admit it now, because it was very obvious that last night you were very drunk. Very drunk. You were. Was, you weren't listening. You were just talking over everybody. You were blathering. How is that any different from any other day? The 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 level. You leveled up your annoyance. A level. <laughs> I had more annoyance points. Mm. Now, the thing that neither of us have been playing that you mentioned was Old Republic. So, why is that? I don't. I don't really know. I mean, like, I, I always looked at us playing Old Republic as being like the three of us together, sort of thing. But mm-hmm. you know what? I've just got a feeling that it just wasn't fun anymore. That's that's kind of the feeling that I was. I kind of had three main reasons, and the one was. I still like the main story for each character, but I was kind of I was playing solo on my Sith, which is a bit behind the the one I was playing along with you. Uh-huh. And I was I got to Hoth for the first time, and I was a bit under leveled. And I thought I do want to see what happens in the story, but I really can't be arsed with all the generic quests that I need to do. So I have <laughs> XP to do the story quests. Yeah, yeah. And I thought it's going to be like that for every character. The only unique thing is the story missions. The every other generic one is the same cutscenes. And yeah, you can do it good or evil, but the differences aren't that big. No. It's just a word, usually. It's usually just the the, the ending of each of each yeah. quest, really. And the other reason was just general annoyance with EA and Bioware, actually, for Mass Effect 3 related stuff. <laughs> and, uh, Take it out on them. Take it so out I have actually cancelled my subscription, and in the reason box I put not enough content and shoddy big business practices. <laughs> And then I got I got an email from them the other day saying, "Could you please fill out this survey to let us know why you quit?" I thought, "No, <laughs> no, no, not helping you." But what I did get prior to that was an email that I know you got as well, which is one they send out automatically if you haven't played for a week. I is think. that what it is? If you haven't played for a week? It's a, yeah. So mine says T seven misses your adventure, sad face. And it's a picture of my little R two D two rip off saying he eagerly awaits my return. Yeah, I got one from Kaizen Vess. He misses the. I was, I was going to ask that. So you got one from your lizard. <laughs> your companions are counting on you to continue the adventure. So you get an email from your companion that everybody hates, including you. Especially saying, Please me. Come back, and you'll look at that email and think, "No, I don't want to." <laughs> and you've and you've given me another reason not to. <laughs> yeah, because I have to stare at that stupid fucking lizard's face saying, "Oh, come back and play with me." Yeah, yeah. So I think that's that's us done with Old Republic, pretty much. It, it, it's good in the short term, but I, I was have... expecting us to sort of cap out of fifty, find that we couldn't really do any of the end game. There wasn't that much content and stuff, and it would dry up there. But we yeah. didn't even get to fifty. You know, I might still go on prior to my, this month ending to get level fifty because I want to see the end of my Jedi Knight's plot. Um, just I to just see won't bother. What happens. I just won't bother. But it was fun while it lasted, and this is the thing with MMOs. Unless you get on and try it, you've no idea how... It, it's hard to get that sticking thing, because because of bloody WoW. That's, <laughs> that's why. I don't want to mention WoW. What I do want to move on to on the subject of MMOs is because I've been watching Guild Wars 2 stuff because they've had their first closed beta. All right, yeah, yeah. I remember it's applying like it has some It has some interesting concepts because the first Guild Wars was special in the sense that you didn't need to pay a subscription. No, no, you just don't bought... name it more. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if that's applying to the second one. I would assume so. That's, the, a good, is, that's a good business practice, but for MMOs, it's really difficult. It's dangerous. How yeah. how do you how do you maintain the servers and keep the content coming if you're they, not? They, getting... brought, they brought out only proper expansions rather than major patches. So I you think just bought big exactly bulk expansions. Mm. Yeah, I bet like Final oh, Fantasy, Fantasy did that, but you still paid the subscription. But yeah. They... So the, one of the ethos they have is that they wanted to try and get rid of the the Trinity, you know, tanks, healers. 
damage dealers where everybody can kind of do a little bit of everything. People so that have you don't... tried that in the past. I mean, like... They have, yeah. Um, Warhammer Online tried that, where you had different types of healers. There were ones that you built up your like your healing capabilities through doing damage and things like that, and mm-hmm. tanks that had, um, you know, sort of damage and, and different types of mages and stuff. And it they, they tried something very different with that. And I'm... I, couldn't really quite put my finger on why it didn't work. I've got a feeling the graphics were a bit out of date, and that's what put a lot of people off in the first mm-hmm. instance. But um, they did a lot of interesting things with with. Warhammer. I am surprised Warhammer didn't do better than it did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was, and they it put a right. lot of money into it as well. A lot yeah. of money went into that. Yeah, that's why MMOs are dangerous yes, right now. They require a mm. lot of capital. But also, Guild Wars Two is using like a totally dynamic quest system where you just need to be in the area to get a quest kind of thing. Yeah, but that's so just any, like the public quests from, from... It is, except rather than just being like that, the whole game is like that. And there's collectibles to get skill points to give you extra buffs, and your abilities change based on the weapon you're equipped with, rather like than just that. your class. I like that. That's, yeah, so you can switch on the fly if you need to suddenly change role, for example. That reminds me of the way that, like, when I was reading about Final Fantasy fourteen long before it actually came out, but that was like how they were trying to trying to you know pitch it to people was that it was it was more about the weapon you were using rather than the character yes whereas yes. in Final fantasy 11 it was all about the character and the class yeah your, you your job your job hmm. anyway so i have two. i have an amusing bit of news about guild wars 2 actually the human uh, the human warrior class voiced by nolan north <laughs> <laughs> you can't escape him you cannot he he is like gaming syphilis he's just everywhere and he spreads Ugh. You know, I think in the past I described Xbox Live as gaming syphilis. So <laughs> it's evolved. It's evolved from people on Xbox Live to just Nolan North. When when did this all start? Like, when did he? When did syphilis start? No. <laughs> it's when uh, Randy Guy got curious. A little too curious. No. When did Nolan North like really sort of just appear everywhere? When did that happen? It just sort of. I think it's because he did so well as um, Nathan Drake. I think I'm not. I'm not entirely sure why he keeps on, or why he's so sought after. I mean, it's he is a good actor. I'm yeah, it's no, no, it's not that. And he does do a very good job as Drake. I'm not sure if that was the very first game he did. It's just, probably the first thing he did on PS3. It's just weird that like out of nowhere he just poof, that's it. He's just on on mm-hmm. everything. Wait, on everything in everything. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Someone needs to teach him about oversaturation quickly because <laughs> he's getting on my nerves now. Yep, 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 yep. So that's wrapped up anything MMO related, I think. Time for a miscellaneous topic? Yeah, sure, Let's why not? Your list, Audible Snigger. <laughs> I don't have a list. <laughs> holiday, holiday. That's, well, that's what we can do, uh, what I'll do is I've got an email, right? We've got an email from Noodles. All right. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll use that as a springboard onto the next conversation topic. How about that? Isn't that gaming related, though? Yeah, okay. Let's, all right, okay. Do you want a brief random topic? Yeah, go. Fine, sure. I kind of have I kind of have two that's connected to The Simpsons in a way, but I'll start with one that isn't directly connected. Did you know that in Canada they have a national holiday called Ca- uh, Family Day? And what, what does that involve? Exactly. Because I know someone and they told me, oh, today I'm, I'm spending time with the family. It's family day. And I started laughing because it reminded me of that Simpsons episode where they make up love day just as an excuse to sell shit to people <laughs> to, to, for the dry summer months. And this that's is, exactly what it is. The, um, it, just the other day, apparently, was like International Women's Day as well. It was. I was going to put something very distasteful on Twitter about that, but I, <laughs> I decided against it. But it's a case of, well, you couldn't really have an International Man's Day, could you? You, you wouldn't get away with it. Well, no, we have the other 364. That's kind of what I was going to say <laughs> on Twitter. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. It does. But anyway, yeah, family day. I mean, people hate their families, mostly. I I, um, sorry, maybe that was my cynicism spring again. <laughs> I assume people hate their families. Or they just wouldn't like spending prolonged period of time with them unless there was a reason. But via family day, it just reeks of we don't have enough holidays in in late January. 
I think that's when it was, or February, or whatever. Nobody's in the fucking country. They're on holiday. That's, well, it's... We can't all afford skiing holidays to Bulgaria. Oh, okay. I mean, some of us had to grow up going to Butlins and <laughs> Caravan Park. <laughs> I've only really been going the last few years, but yeah, I've never been to like Butlins or Centre Parks or any of those weird, weird things. No, 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 no. It's like just no. It's a it's like a concentration camp where you're forced to be happy on pain of being ridiculed. That's what Butlins is. Nice, nice. Mm. I remember sitting in the club on one of those ones and we're watching this shit act on stage in a room full of people and they said, everybody stand on your chairs, everybody. If you don't stand on your chairs, we're pulling you up on stage. And I just sat there and then they had folk going through the audience looking for folk not complying and they kind of saw me walking towards me with a smile but he clearly guessed by my facial expression that I wasn't moving. <laughs> <laughs> and he just kept on moving past me. I'll punch you if you get <laughs> any closer. Again, I'm a fucking chair, piss off. I don't like audience participation. In no, I hate it, and I don't know. I got forced to go there. But yeah, that's that's a lifetime of childhood holidays summed up for you right there. So Refused your next my chair. your next your next holiday is going to be um, like going to Guantanamo Bay or something like that. That would be a nice break from. That'd be a nice break from red coats and stupid acts with puppets and oh, God. puppets. Yeah, there was a puppet. Actually, I've seen the guy on TV since then. <laughs> so he clearly made it. But there you go. I've never heard of him. The other thing I wanted to briefly talk about in relation to The Simpsons was that they've had 500 episodes now. It's quite a lot. Which, yeah. But it's quite been a, a long time. And what's funny is I saw that I found a website that was doing a top five ever episodes as voted by fans. I bet they're horrible, horrible ones. No, they're not, believe it or not. <laughs> Because it's a, it is common knowledge that The Simpsons isn't funny anymore. It's jumped the shark a long time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of the 500 episodes, there's probably about 40 good ones, which isn't a bad ratio considering how many years it's been going, I suppose. True. But I have the top five list, and I agree with quite a lot of these, in fact. And number five was Flaming Moe's. Do you remember that one? He invents that drink or something, doesn't he? He invents the drink with cough syrup and Moe yeah. steals it. Mo. Mo, that one. Mo. Number four, which is from the same season, I think, which is about se- season four at most, is Marge versus the monorail. The monorail one's quite good. Yeah, yeah. that's the one that has Leonard Nimoy and he teleports <laughs> at the end randomly. Uh, number three is You Only Move Twice, which is actually my favourite episode. It's the Scorpio one. Yeah, the Hank Scorpio. I like Hank that one. Scorpio. He is my, my favourite character in The Simpsons as well, I <laughs> I'm very glad that they brought him in to do the villain in the movie as well, because it made the movie a lot better. <laughs> I've just got the image of him with the flamethrower. <laughs> uh, Feel free to no, kill kill a few of the guys on your way out. <laughs> kill anybody on the way out, I'd appreciate it. And number two is Cape Fear, which was the second or third uh, Bob episode. And again, Kelsey Grammer as Sigel Bob is great as well. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. one of my favourite characters. And number one, though, was Who Shot Mr. Burns, which I disagree with. It's the only but, time that they ever really had, like, one of those sort of big... I can remember us, in fact, and other friends just sitting there trying to solve who did it as well. It's the only one that they ever really had a big build-up for, which... But then they went out and didn't kill him. No. And then the baby did it. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler from 1997? Seven, yeah, something like that. That's what I was going to guess there. I was, I was also going to use an episode of The Simpsons as an example of how you can tell when a sitcom has been going on too long. Or, right, okay. Or I don't need to go into that if, if it's boring, because it, it's kind of writer related, and I know how people. Well, kind of the thing is, off. you can apply it back to video games and stuff with with them um, series and franchises jumping the shark. I mean, you know when they decide to suddenly implement something that's absolutely ridiculous. That it's jumped. Yes. Shark. Yeah. It, it, like take take. Um, a lot of people are considering. With, if we go back to World of Warcraft here, the latest mm. expansion. Oh, the panda thing. They, they people are saying mm. that that's their jumping the shark. Oh right. People seem to think that that's mm. that's going to be part of their downfall. Any particular reason? Just because they're pandas? Is that? <sighs> why? I don't know. I just think that like the, the content people were looking for as Isn't, the next thing to breathe yeah. fresh air into the franchise. Was not pandas. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. The last two big sort of, you know, content <laughs> dumps have been have been pretty good. What, Cataclysm and 
Well, I never played play. Cataclysm, but I've heard good things. But mm-hmm. Wrath of the Leech King was was pretty good. In fact, yeah, most most yeah, even Burning Crusade and stuff is it was all really good stuff. Do you think people know what jumping the shark means? By the way, I think it's quite an old-fashioned. If you don't know what it means, it's a reference to Happy Days from the episode yes. where the Fonz jumps over a shark on a like a yeah. jet ski. On a jet mar- ski um, <laughs> it's being pulled on. I think it was a motorbike at the time, was it not? I can't remember. Well, either way, it was the point people decided the show will never get any. Well, depending on your point of view, worse or better than that, moment. <laughs> and therefore everything after will never compare. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So yeah, there are there's like points you can apply to games. Although the example I was going to specifically specifically use references comedy, and this applies to things like Family Guy, Scrubs, even classics like Frasier, for example. Okay. In my opinion, I'll asterisk this with. <laughs> Like, uh, a good example of a Simpsons episode which had a good mix of comedy and then also, like, a happy kind of awe moment is called Lisa's First Word, where they want to know what Lisa's first word was and then they tell a story and it turns out it was Bart because they cared for each other, blah, blah, blah. And the episode starts with them trying to get Maggie to talk. And then at the end, Lisa and Bart are arguing. So Homer carries Maggie off saying... Uh, the sooner kids talk, the sooner they talk back. I hope you never say a word. Leaves her alone in her room, and after he leaves, she says, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's a nice, happy ending. It's a very tender moment for an episode that also had humour in it. And they were fine with leaving it there. If that episode was done today, Homer would go out of the room, Maggie would say, Daddy. He'd rush back in and point at her, saying, I heard you say, Daddy. I heard you. And she'd be shaking her head and saying no and crossing her arms and looking away. And that's how it would end. So you're saying that they're changing the writing style to suit what they think the new audience I, wants and needs. I think writers get afraid of ending on a sad note or a, or a non-funny note. Everything has to have a laugh, even tender moments or emotional moments. And I think that's when you notice. And it's like when they also start having not just an A story and a B story, they start having a C and a D as well. Because that's what put me off Scrubs when they stopped being brave enough to end an episode emotionally rather than... Yeah, there's, there's some pretty pretty good ones I can think of for Scrubs. Early on, of. yeah, but then later on they started doing... They tried to do the same thing, but then they thought, but this isn't funny. We have to have a joke here. It's been 30 seconds without a laugh. <laughs> there has to be a there joke. There has been a laughter track. Somebody put a laughter track in. Get the janitor in here to do something stupid with his fork knife thing. <laughs> So is that is that the end of your? That's my uh, yeah. Your rant. I do apologise for going on about it. But I know I care about writing related things more than normal people and stuff in general, really. But I can't help being weird. So on the subject of of like jumping the shark, I suppose we can branch this off because you've oh. been saying this in in the past that when it comes to I'm about to talk about Assassin's Creed Three in case you hadn't realised. I gathered and I was very impressed with the segue. Um, you've been basically saying that you know for the last few outings it's been a case of like Brotherhood and revelations because we, we know what's going to happen we know he knows what he needs to do desmond's already stated that he kind of knows what he needs to do but then yes. doesn't go and do it and that's been annoying you that's, now we've yeah since since the last podcast a lot more information's come out about assassin's creed 3 yes it has and it turns out the rumor was correct about so it, yeah so on the back of that we have had an email in from noodles mcmuffin Yes, that I guess you've when already seen stabbed by me. I said, <laughs> I guess you've already seen the screenshot of the new assassin hacking his way through an American soldier's face, and immediately yeah. I thought that was a shame. Now, this was obviously before we've seen the full sort of trailer thing that's coming. Yeah, the reveal, mm-hmm. basically showing that it's set in the American Civil War, where you end up playing. By the looks of things, you end up playing as a Canadian Indian, American, probably yeah. fighting both the British and Americans. Apparently, so they don't. Want I can to see. Free. I can see why they did that. <laughs> Yeah, because they don't want to portray either the Americans or the British as being evil. They're going to be bad on both sides. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have thought that he says that I would have thought that they would have gone for a Victorian London setting with smog filling the air and urchins filling the streets while you weave your way through back alleys trying to pick off your target. Desmond goes into the memories of Jack the Ripper. (laughs) (laughs) That's how I play Assassin's Creed. That's how I play every game. (laughs) That's how I play every game. I just (laughs) pretend that I'm Jack the Ripper. 
that would have been interesting, I suppose. Some have seen this as catering to the American fans, but I can admit that the prospect of a war between two nations is an exciting venue for the next game in the series. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's cut a long story short. uh, Where would you have liked the third game to have been set had it not been the American Revolution? Modern day. Modern day. Is that what you want? You you just want... Yeah, it has to... I think the mistake they made was introducing the futuristic stuff from the get-go, you know? Imagine if it didn't have the Desmond stuff until it reached that point timeline-wise. Then you wouldn't be annoyed because you'd be going through these generations of assassins battling the Templars and it could you, be about their war. In terms of like storyline wise would you, would you still want like a little bit of Desmond like to explain no. what's going on or would you just want to be playing as different assassins and then- They should have started it just purely that Assassin's Creed games are about the assassins and the Templars fighting each other through history and then, and then eventually, eventually you get to modern that, day. That you're playing as a guy who's going yeah. back and playing as his character. Well, not necessarily like that it could just also be that you're now in the modern day because now How like it three games three games now you know that the the real enemy technically isn't the templars you're to try and avoid yeah, a catastrophe no. of some kind without going into details yeah. so now it's getting very annoying like what can desmond learn in the american revolution that will stop the thing from happening again i don't point. i joked on twitter is this plot going to be that they say to Desmond, it turns out people in the modern day use guns, so that knife we've been teaching you to use for a few years now, not going to do much. No, that's a good point. That's what I was about to jump onto, is that how would a modern day one work? I mean, would you be assassinating people with sniper rifles, guns and stuff? Would it not take away some of that? I mean, are they just going to have him going around with knives and stuff, trying to stab people that do have guns instead of... Well, we did have those ridiculous sections in Assassin's Creed 2 where you're in the modern day fighting and you just use your hidden blade because all the poor guys are armed with their batons. Yep, yep, exactly. And you kind of forgive them a little bit in that context, but if you played any further in modern day, they would have to implement guns in a serious way. Well, that's that's true. Like this one, there's going to be a lot of guns because, I mean... (laughs) It's true, yeah. Well, pretty much everybody has guns, and now they're, they are taking it in a different direction gameplay-wise, which could be priming them for a modern-day one, because it's gone or like busy cities. You're going through treetops and things like that. Well, I'll finish off Noodles' email, then we can answer mm-hmm. his question about um, where would you like to, where would you like to be set. But, oh, yeah, but, modern day. I, did, I didn't answer. Um, I don't... Sorry, really... I just up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have that, that big a... Uh, feeling for anything. I mean, I suppose, like, an obvious one would be the same setting as every first-person shooter game for the last oh. 20 years, but somewhere in, um, you know, World War Two, something that goes, like, you know, in the background of that. You would have oh, the right. backdrop right. The backdrop of, like, World War Two, but you wouldn't be, like, you know, directly in the front lines or any of that sort of nonsense, but you would know that that was going on. But you I could thought... be playing, you know, as a, you know, assassin in the background in, say, you know, in London or whatever, but you could also be, like, over in Germany and doing bits and pieces and I thought you meant like Desmond would jump into the into attack of his, <laughs> no, of his cousin who's a soldier in Afghanistan, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you meant World War Two. Well, yeah. if there was like a, nin- a ninja, an assassin, even going around, that's kind of what they're doing with this one, by the sense of things. Because yeah. you're not, you don't have a gun. You have your, you still have a bow and arrow. I think he does. An axe. I'm sure, he uses like a. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Well, like the tomahawk idea, I think that looks quite cool. But he doesn't have a hidden blade. What kind of assassin doesn't have a hidden blade? We'll within, soon find out. Then the ethos of these games. I mean, maybe he has. Like, if we're going back to like your reference to Dust Till Dawn earlier on, but the mm-hmm. guy that like pushes back from the table and he has a gun like mounted on his cock. <laughs> that bit. There is a guy in Dust Till I, Dawn that has a gun like where his willy should be. I don't know if it's like if he still has a willy. I don't know. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Shoots one of them, shoots one of the vampire things with his willy gun. Uh, I don't need to hear maybe, about what maybe guns. that's what the new the new assassin has. He has like a oh, willy gun thing. We're not calling this podcast willy gun. <laughs> so um, Noodles goes on to say, I guess the new venue also brings into the question um, the idea of upgrading your base, which was crucial in uh, the last game. Uh, also <laughs> increasing the length of the games as well in terms of upgrading your base and that sort of stuff and then you had base mm. defence in the last one uh, they've confirmed that the base defence thing isn't coming back because no one liked it, it. Oh, it no it was pointless 
I've also heard rumours that base defence or whatever it's called will not return. So we'll, we've just kind of covered that. Oh, it's oops. Not, <laughs> uh, I know that uh, many have rejoiced that it's gone, but I wanted to hear your opinion on it. There you go. And he also says at the end, oh, request in patchy. Ugh. <laughs> just, ugh. Isn't it passy anyway? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm not Italian. I don't give a fuck. Okay. As, as with most other things. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it because I, it feels like there's been a, a nice jump ahead in terms of time. Hmm. Like, you, you don't feel like you're stranded back in the same... A change of pace is nice, but it isn't the change of pace that I would have liked, I think. Well, is... What I want to see is how the multiplayer pans out, see whether or not they fixed any of the... Because the multiplayer for Brotherhood was good. Oh, Brotherhood, it, yes. I couldn't it, remember which order they went in there. Yes, Brotherhood, yes. Revelations, no. Yeah, it had its faults and so on, and mm. I was just hoping they would fix them for Revelations. Instead, they made things worse. And I'm wondering whether or not that's now going to have them you know, redirect around and do a different sort of, sort of multiplayer. I'm hoping. Apparently, Xbox.com accidentally let slip again that this time around it's got a co-op mode of some kind. Interesting. Could mm. be good. Could be shit. Could be. Could be. The way to find out. Yeah, it's always hard to tell when the French are involved. Moving on to the new topic. On a, on a really quick side note, I've just had a text from my brother to say he got the end of Battlefield 3 for the Xbox. The story yeah. is fucking shit. The worst story I've ever played. Also, only one person can play the multiplayer per copy. Can't lend it to test it out, and it's got a one-time online pass. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the online passes. No, but we've covered that before, so... We have. Yeah. That could branch us into Mass Effect 3, though. Because it didn't do an online pass, but it did something similar. So I've, I've, I won't say I've been in the dark with Mass Effect Three. I mean, obviously, I've tried to avoid, you know, reading or looking at anything for it because I've yet to start playing Mass Effect Two. But I, I hear that it's like quite a big thing. It's yeah, it's been. I'll say now that some of the things that people are making a deal about aren't big. They're just doing it because they don't like the other stuff. So they're just kicking up shit about anything just to... Is it like the whole, it's cool to hate on the thing that's cool? No, there is there is a reason to dislike certain things about Mass Effect 3, which we'll talk about in non-spoilery manner in a minute. Good, good. But also they're picking on little things, which sound a bit bad. Like an example is, one of the people you can romance in the game, their picture appears in your room of your ship, if you romance them, and they found that it's just a free-to-use picture from some image site. So they, can, they must have just Googled pretty woman, picked one of the first options, and stuck it in the game because it, it didn't, they didn't have to pay for it. Well, it doesn't actually look like the person that you're romancing in the game. Well, uh, well, it's, I can't say who it is. Oh, right, okay. okay. <laughs> I'll go into detail afterwards. Yeah, but, so this, but that's not that's not really that big a deal. It's not really no. that relevant. The game isn't like solely about like who it's, you're fucking. It's purely it? down to a laziness point of view, or cheapness. Like they just lazily googled an image that had no copyright on it, so they could. But bung you it in. don't know in terms of production. You don't know if they just suddenly like you know late one night they get ready to pack <laughs> up and they thought you know it might be an interesting thing. It might be quite cool to have that little extra bit there. We'll get a picture of. We'll have to go and get like the, you know casting sessions. No, we'll just go and find a free image off the internet. Bish bash bosh done. That's laziness. But, but <laughs> if it's not supposed to be a big part of the game, who cares? Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's test you on something else then. Day one DLC. What's your opinion on that? Without going into details yet. I think that's a bit ridiculous. No, the it's DLC. That, wait, wait, wait. It's day what? one DLC, not the same equivalent, right? As releasing like Super Ultra Collector's Edition, Normal Edition, and you know that sort of thing. Because if you get like you know the limited edition collector's box set or whatever, mm-hmm. and it comes with like extra skins and all this sort of stuff, that's yeah. the same equivalent as day one DLC. Well, actually, people who have the most expensive version of Mass Effect Three get the day one DLC for free. There you go. So then 
as she's pointing out. Same principle. Uh, but I use the term free loosely because you just spent a hundred quid on a special edition with about ten quid worth of extra stuff yeah. in it. But it's the same. That's nothing new. You're just now saying that these people that didn't buy the really big, massive special edition mm-hmm. one still have yeah. the option to get the content the other people have got. There so that's was, new. There was a lot of controversy about this day, day one DLC, not just because it cost money for people who didn't have this standard edition, but also because of what it was. It was an extra crew member of a story-centric race, I'll say, without spoilers. Hmm. So, so you're saying that it's actually people, something that people kind of think is a bit key to the game. Yes, that's the angle people took. And then Casey what's Hudson, I think his name is, kind of went on to say, oh, no, 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 we finished the game back in like the end of the year. So since January, we've been working on DLC. So it just seems like it was left out on purpose. You think, okay, maybe, maybe there's a bit of truth there, except the character that is Day 1 DLC was in the leaked script that I read. So they so, had definitely so already implemented that. It a wasn't long time. a partial lie; it was a blatant lie. Oh dear! Yeah, and it doesn't end there. They've also been selling exclusive DLCs. To yeah, all are involved these. here, aren't they? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. No, there just, is no Bioware now. For There's a second, only... I was just thinking, it's, yeah, it is definitely EA now. Yeah, yeah. So there is no yeah. Bioware. There is just EA. I'm not. I'm like, color me surprised because I'm not. <laughs> so there's all kinds of crap you can get that has free Mass Effect 3 DLC included with it. So someone with too much time on their hands tallied up how much it would cost if you wanted every single bit of DLC for Mass Effect 3 if you bought the things you had to, like special editions, figures, books. And the total came to $870. Which, believe it or not, apparently isn't the worst ever. Apparently the worst ever was Railworks 3 Train Simulator 2012, 2012, which has $1,679 worth of DLC. Fucking hell. Yeah. Who, who spent $1,600 <laughs> on train-related DLC? I, you could probably start building your own little mini like monorail thing in your back garden. You probably I'd love could. that. I'd love... See, when I, like, when I lived in England, there was a... a sort of a park that was nearby and one of the things that they had like they had the tennis courts and other things like that but they also had this little sort of mini train track thing and it was like like a like a proper mini train track it wasn't yeah. like like remote control thing that you were putting around in your attic or anything like that it was you sat on it and it had little carriages and stuff you don't see like stuff like that anymore for anti-social reasons i would think i I don't know if it's still there or not. I'm going to have to look into that. But I would love something like that. That would be brilliant around here. Can you imagine, like, you're in Stirling and it's like, rather than, like, hopping <laughs> on a bus or something, you get on this tiny little train that goes on the track and stuff. And it goes through tunnels. And I think if you, got, if you got on one of them, you wouldn't get off all day. Exactly. <laughs> you, could, you could just, that's it. You just take your PSP and you sit on the back of this train and you go around the town. That would be brilliant. I'd love that. Going away from the <laughs> type happy memories back to shit about Mass Effect 3 actually I'm going to link it in with bear related Capcom disaster oh dear the CR wants us to talk about this one it's of these days we are really going to get in a lot of trouble for this well we can't as long as we're stating facts so oh, this okay. is related to Street Fighter X Tekken someone hacked the disc and found that characters which are going to be DLC are on it pretty much so are colours that they're going to charge for <laughs> Well, now that's not new because you've no. had to pay for like weapon color skins and stuff on Gears Three, didn't you? But there's a very this is a perfect example of flawed logic that at first sounds like it might make sense because Capcom then retaliated by saying the reason it's on the disc is for ease of accessibility and compatibility, so that people don't need to download it to fight against people who do have DLC. Right, and there is a kind of angle there because, like for Disgaea Four, the DLC patch which adds all the characters prior to you buying them was two gig, and you think not everybody wants to download two gig. True, and especially this is this isn't like um, a single player thing where it's like you you know you don't have you don't have a choice. It's, a, it's yeah. like you know if you if you're playing a beat 'em up and you're playing against somebody who has decided that they want to pay for the DLC and they want to use one of these characters, that you also need that information to play against that that person. Yes, so um, from that exam. Example, you kind of think, okay, you've got a point there, Capcom, you you sly bear you. So then you turn to leave, but then as you leave, you're playing it over in your head a few times, and then you start to think a bit more, and then you pause, you turn around and you stare at him, and you think, hang on a minute. If it's on the disc, it was finished before the game was gold. Yep. So why the fuck is it DLC? Exactly. 
<laughs> and at which point the bear's eyes light up and it runs off. <laughs> Foiled again. No, so that's think- it's a, that's a, a clear cut case of it's something that they definitely have ready and they were holding it for extra monies. That's yeah. that, I mean, there's there's no way of arguing out that one. You cannot yeah. you cannot get around it like, because I'm, they're I'm, saying it's definitely there. It's definitely ready. It's definitely in the disc. There's nothing else that needs to be fully prepared for it because, as mm-hmm. they're saying, the reason it's on the disc is so you don't need to download anything further. So yeah. that's just them being rip-off merchants. Like, I'm amused on Twitter whether or not, after making that statement, if Capcom were just really stupid. <laughs> or if they... <laughs> but then I thought Maybe they it. think they've got, like, this Jedi bear mind trick thing going awesome. on where they think that they... Because they've made some sort of explanation, you're going, yeah, that does make sense. And not enough people are going away and going... Hang, Hang on. on a minute. Yeah. yeah. What you've just told me is bullshit. I think what's happening, though, is that Japanese-based companies like Capcom are looking at what Western-based companies like Activision and EA are getting away with. And they're trying it, and they're, in their board meetings, they're going, why aren't we getting away with it when they clearly are? And it's true, they shouldn't be getting away with it, but they do. I suppose. Not all but the time. I, I think it depends on the type of game, and I think that's where the problem lies. I think it depends on the type of person playing the game. Well, that's <laughs> that's that's really related to the game, as you're saying, related to like Call of Duty and things like that. And you've got all the like, let's go with the stereotype of the people playing Call of Duty and stuff, and that are going to buy the map packs and going to buy all these things that clearly they shouldn't need to pay for. They should already be you know available for free at launch, etc. Um, and um, another thing people are complaining about is that. There's multiple endings to Mass Effect 3, but regardless of which you pick, nothing you did prior really has anything, no inf- no direct influence, shall we say. Listed. So you're saying that, that essentially nothing you did to the entire game matters because at the end you get to pick how you're going to pan out the, the final ending yeah. in a few different ways. It's like, the, it's like the ending to Deus Ex where you literally have three buttons and it's like ending one, ending two, ending three. Metaphorical in Mass Effect's case, but in Deus Ex it was actually literal. That was the end. You had buttons to press, and that decided your ending. So yeah, but but I watched some of the endings because I wanted to see if they differed from the script I'd read. And after each ending, regardless of which you pick, you get a message. And I'm paraphrasing slightly, but what it essentially says is, "Don't worry, DLC's on the way." <laughs> so what they've done is they've left you on a, a cliffhanger intentionally, so you have to buy the DLC to get the finale. The proper finale. Um, I don't. I know. I don't know if it's like that. It's, they might patch in a proper ending layer. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but you have to pay for it. Well, yeah, yeah, you won't have to pay, of course. Do you remember me mentioning? I think two podcasts ago now about games financial trouble. Yes, yes. And how they were having trouble coming to credit agreements, but then it all cleared up. They had another problem because um, last week, in fact, they had to post a message on their site and email all pre-order people who wanted Mass Effect 3. They weren't they stocking it, were they? They couldn't come to a credit agreement with EA. And I think credit agreement in this sense means deciding on a buying price, but then getting a certain number of copies of the game on credit to give the money back yeah, once yeah. they've sold, I think. I think that's what it means in this case. Let's just say that's what happens. That's how things okay. work in the but either way, But either way, EA and them couldn't meet... Uh, an agreement that yeah. they both thought was acceptable. So they had to cancel all pre-orders of Mass Effect 3, say, sorry, we're not stocking any EA games now. For now, anyway. It, won't, it might change in the future. And they had to give five quid's worth of reward points to everybody who pre-ordered. <laughs> so I, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I will state again, that I've said a few times before, but Activision has a very large share in game. Mm, yeah. So who knows? But apparently Ubisoft games are also having a bit of trouble getting stocked in games as well. In game, rather. It's a shame. I might end up going the way of the Dodo. It's fine, but, though, because you'll just be able to buy your games and stuff and things like Tesco, where they drop the price ridiculously just to get you in store to buy carrots or, and things. Or start to buy online, which is cheaper overall anyway. You buy your carrots and tampons and your glove duties. Mm. I have an angry... That would be a really <laughs> interesting shopping basket. You've got your basket and it's got like a bag of carrots. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting is what I use. Oh. And then Call of Duty. I was thinking, wonder what he's going to get up to tonight. <laughs> that <laughs> happened to me once when I went into. It was just a. It was a local sort of co-op. Mm. Um, I'd gone in to buy a few bits and pieces that happened to be necessities at the time, and I bought olive oil, mm-hmm. whipped cream, <laughs> wine, and candles. 
that reminds me of a Simpsons episode where Homer comes home with a bag with that kind of stuff and Marge is looking at it and she says, I don't know what you've got planned tonight, but count me out of it. Exactly. <laughs> and I, like, at the time, I hadn't really realised, actually, this looks kind of dodgy. <laughs> and to a certain extent, some of it was for dodgy purposes, but not... not don't not... share that, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, they must have thought or nobody else's business. It's it's quite it's quite good because you've got this this like idea in your head that they're sitting there thinking, I wonder what he's up to tonight, and they've yeah. probably been thinking about that the rest of the shift. Yeah, it probably kept them entertained. <laughs> it makes me want to go into a shop and just buy totally random things like that I could think of that that wouldn't really have any real interaction, or even worse, stuff that could have an interaction. Like you could go into like one section and buy cucumber the next section to buy <laughs> lube and then the next section to buy like I don't, uh, know. The don't touch my booty spongebob squarepants <laughs> oh, a bag of sweets a bag of sweets a cucumber and some lube no 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 no, no. i really want to move on <laughs> since i'm doing all these naruto videos i'm obviously getting a lot of comments from kiddies so i thought it might be a good idea just if i ever saw a really bad one to copy it down so this will be my bad comment of the week <laughs> bad comment of the week it's on the subject of the generations game uh, as in the neural one not the one on TV the Bruce Forsyth <laughs> the racism days with Jim Davison <laughs> so yeah it's about that and they said I think this game could have been DLC for 15 bucks because it doesn't add anything new, but new cars, new cars and stages for fuck's sake, 59 bucks for this meh. If Namco will not bring full Naruto game in this console generation, which will have finished story and story battles, I'm a go but fuck <laughs> those bastards. They are doing things like Capcom did, adding cars and releasing new games of SF as fully fledged games, colon, asterisk. I think you just give me cancer. <laughs> you know what's really annoying? They actually had some good points there, but they put it forward in such a bad way. See, that's, this is the thing. If you can't... If you can't articulate. Articulate. Exa- I, I sometimes have trouble starting a sentence, but if you no, can't... No, you have to go ending them. You tend to forget the end sentences. You don't end... Sentences. I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, no, if you can't articulate it properly, people aren't going to pay attention to what you've said. Yes, that's why I was initially apprehensive about doing podcasts, because I prefer having time to think about what I'm saying. No, it's more fun when it's all uh, random. Okay. I mean, if you'd written everything down, like... Who knows? Yeah, it would be stilted, it wouldn't be... No. Compared to... Get off the cuff cucumber humour. Yes, or the, the the scary places that that conversation went. <laughs> the scary dark place. It's a bad man. <laughs> there's going to be a Dragon Ball Z Connect game how does that work? how that's going to work is that 10 year olds around the country are going to get knocked the fuck out <laughs> I love that idea do you know like I'm really hoping that they put in one of these like oh, I'm trying to think what it's called it's like intuitive like feedback where like if you punch oh, something you get hit, you the, the, yeah I would love that and you play like beat em ups with kids across the country <laughs> and you're just like lamping shit shit out of the screen and on the other end this kid's lying like on the floor all like <laughs> broken and bloody <laughs> I think I I'm an probably, evil evil person <laughs> I think I should probably let your girlfriend know about these dangerous thoughts you're harbouring <laughs> <laughs> apparently they, they released something like this like not that long ago was that it not was for having gag? sex with and it was like what? one person wears like one thing and the other person and it's like a, almost like a like a like a big pillow that you lie on or something and when one person's doing one thing to the pillow it does things on the other end and stuff it's all a bit oh. kind of creepy <laughs> was it made by the Japanese? it might be I don't know if it had like a, a bit that said like insert your three and a half inch floppy in it though you're stealing that joke from Craig Charles maybe I don't know <laughs> what were we talking about that got us onto that? Uh, Dragon Ball Z Connect game Oh, yeah. So, no, if anyone's wondering, I will not be getting a Connect Dragon Ball game. <laughs> oh, but that I'm not so making an arse of myself like that. <laughs> I could just see, like, you know, the whole, like, 
what's the term? Like geeky sort of wimpy people, like sort of flailing their arms at each other when they yeah, fight. There'll be a whole new generation of Star Wars kid videos. Exactly. Oh, that would be so good. That'll be good. That'll be that'll be amusing. Like the 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 we fail ones where you'd see people that like launch controllers yes. punching people or that one with the kid that turns around with the iPad and just smacks his brother in the <laughs> face with it. Oh, you never did show me that the last time we spoke about it. I still want to see that. Oh, right. Okay, I'll have to find it for well, you. We're going to be finishing fairly soon anyway, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we've got two little points left. Okay. One is that Valve was apparently working on a console, but now they've gone on record saying they're not. They're not. So I don't see that there's not I think that might them. be a bit of a lie. I think they might be building something that isn't classed as a console, but... The thing, if they're going to um, do something, it will be somewhere between a PC and a console. Yes, or like an based, entertainment centre. Based on uh, which, digital distribution still. They, they tried to say that like in the past that things like the PlayStation things were entertainment centres. That's how they tried to bridge the gap because gaming wasn't cool. And then PlayStation yes. came along and it was cool. And now it's not an issue. But now you, you're starting to see them that become... They are kind of... Yeah, they're doing well. Yeah, because that you're is... getting like, things like Netflix and people are downloading movies and you're getting, all these sort of things. I mean, I, I use my PS3 as my Blu-ray player. I mean, that's one of the reasons yeah. I got one. Um, so I can see people are using them for for doing these things, and it's not going to take that much for someone to just bring something out that bridges the gap between mm. sort of TV, console, and PC, and it just sort of incorporates all into one comfortable package. Yes, and it will be purely digital, I think, because then that means they can still maintain their all. Yeah, they, 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 that that would be good. I think that would be all right. No, actually. It, no, it would not be very bad. I don't. I don't like having tons of boxes in space and I, I like the fact that like I don't have a problem with with Steam in terms of like if I get a new computer I just put my Steam ID and I don't have to go and find all these discs and all that sort of nonsense <laughs> and see the number of times like for like if I decide to go back and play a particular MMO or something and I have to put the CD key in from a box and it's like hidden away in the, the depths of fucking nowhere I like having boxes yeah I know you like having boxes maybe you could pay like a, a small like extra fee. Oh, maybe they, they could release boxes as DLC for digital games. <laughs> Instead of hats. You yes. Just, you just pay for boxes. Yes. Oh, oh I'm going to pitch that. I'm going to pitch that game. I hope they don't do that because I'd need to buy the boxes. <sighs> maybe they could make dress the boxes up like hats. Like, because you don't that's, have anything inside it, you just make a hat. That's, that's like dangerous thinking. <laughs> <laughs> like the box is the hat. Valve is cannot box. hear this. They, they must never hear of this. They're moving into shoes territory anyway now, anyway, aren't they? Or gloves. I can't remember what they're doing there. I, I think CR said it was shoes or something. But they've had <laughs> shoes in TF2 for a while now, like Alibaba's wee booties and stuff. So my last thing is a complaining thing, kind of. In fact, no, my second last thing is, and I was curious if this is the same on the the mobile, um, the Android app store. You see this as if like you haven't spent the whole podcast complaining about things. <laughs> Not just things, mostly Mass Effect Three. Okay, so I hate when I check the app store that I see. Oh, I've got three or four apps that have an update, and I always like checking what's being updated. So I always go into it and it says, "Oh, this is version whatever." And usually it will say bug fixes, and that's it. Yeah. Then I'll I'll download the updates, and then the next time I load up the app, I find that they've stealthily added ads to it, and that really annoys me. Not so much the adding of the ads, just that they've done it without telling you, and that really gets on my nerves. I haven't noticed that on the Android store. It, it mm-hmm. might happen. Um, you know, someone's probably bound to correct me, but um, generally speaking. <sighs> You can normally see like something's already like ad supported or whatever. Yes, yeah, but, it does see that. But I have yet to see an app that I've been running for a while, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, when I load it up with an update, it decides that it's it's suddenly got adverts on it. But the vast majority don't. I mean, okay, like free stuff, obvi- obviously, is more prone to it. You're not going to pay for something yes. and get adverts yeah. on top of it. Um, that would be silly, like paying for a TV <laughs> license. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no seriously fucking i the argument i always run for tv licensing right is that mm. like take bbc which doesn't have adverts 
right? Yeah. Because because you're paying your TV license and that's what pays through to them. The BBC, yeah. Right. So how the fuck can they get away with releasing things on DVD that you've already paid for and make you pay for it again? Um, uh, like Sherlock, for example. Let's let's go with Sherlock. You've paid for them to produce that show with your TV licensing. Yeah. And you can watch it for free on the TV, but then it, that's it. It's only on the once. They might repeat it at Christmas or something. But, but then yeah. if you want to go and get it, like, so you can watch it whenever you want, you have paid for it after all. Mm-hmm. You've got to go and fork out another 20 quid for the DVD. Well, you could argue that you're paying for the production of the DVD, but that wouldn't cost the full 20 quid. For we sure. all know that the production yeah. costs for yeah. CDs and DVDs is a pittance these days. Yes, especially if it's done on mass. Exactly. And they use the same places, and it's just literally all they do is just change the data. It's not like they have to like build a whole new machine for each different DVD. It's just the different yeah. data that gets ripped to it. That annoys me. It really annoys me. Well, rather than grind your gears further about a non-gaming related topic, the thing I want to close on is we haven't really spoke about other than Raccoon Say what we're interested in in the future in terms of stuff we'll be playing. So I did a little look into what's out soon. Okay. So uh, Raccoon City is out on the 23rd, so that's 13 days from now. Oh, I didn't realise it was that close. It is. So there's already, of course, this retailer has this. That's payday. That's all right then. Yeah, so if you get it from game, there's like an extra gun and whatnot. Interestingly, also, the Xbox version of Raccoon City has a unique mode to the PS3. So the Nemesis mode, yeah, I read yeah. about that. It yeah. doesn't sound like that bit. I mean, it's still essentially just Team Deathmatch. It's just there's a bit that you can activate that turns the Nemesis onto your side. So I, What I was hoping for when I watched the trailer was that you get to play as the Nemesis. Play as him. Mm-hmm. But you play don't. as him in his stupid plastic face and shit. Fars! Instead of his rocket launcher like he should have. Stars. <laughs> yes, stars. Stars. Same day, Kid Icarus Uprising is out for the 3DS, which is like a big budget 3DS game, so I think that might be interesting. Never played any of the originals, I don't think. Maybe a really See this really face? Good... This is how interested I am. You can't ignore the 3DS just because you don't like it. <laughs> you can. No, no, no. I'm ignoring the 3DS because I don't own one. Oh, all right, okay. Plus, I didn't really think it was that great. No. For eight, you buy a circle pad for it. God, no. <laughs> it's unnecessary. You don't need it. Okay, good. Uh, the only game I saw so far in April that I was kind of interested in was Prototype 2. You never played Prototype 1, did you? No. It's one of those games that's really fun, but it gets repetitive before you finish it for the first time. Oh. So it does have its moments, but the kind of it has day one DLC as well so I think that's put me off buying it <sighs> yeah uh, and that was it until May when I saw that's when Max Payne 3 is out but I haven't really been following that I don't like that it's not in Remedy's hands I liked Max Payne 1 and 2 a lot so, so did I. Uh, I, I I love the way they write it and, and I still like that they essentially killed Max Payne off in Alan Wake <laughs> that knocked even though they sold the IP on they've technically killed him off it's uh, we'll, we'll, that's a sort of watch this space thing for me, yeah. I reckon. So yeah, so not not an awful lot on the horizon then, really. Sadly, not. Although I mean, we are going to be doing a co-op playthrough of Rack and Say, so that's something. And as far as big projects go, that'll be the next big major thing we do. The big thing. Yeah, but other than that, not nothing that's jumping out. So you just spend your time uploading more on the route of videos. I'm kind of until, you, until you've put like 10 up of every possible character combination fighting. The annoying thing is when people ask for something they've already done, so they're clearly not checking the previous videos. No. But the, no it, don't it, be it, stupid. You're assuming that people are actually using some brains before asking. Yes, yes. Once it's out in America, people will probably stop asking because I'm playing the Japanese version and, you know, it's like the number of people. Foreign stuff. It's like the number of people that ask for your PSN ID and stuff. Even when it's, it's clearly on- there on your YouTube channel. Uh, stop or what, what do you use to record with? It's There's a thing that directs you to a post that you made telling them how you record your videos. Yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah angry about things. Angry. Yeah, otherwise we'll just trail into growls and... <laughs> Turn into bears. No, no. Yeah, no. that's what happens. That's how it starts. You get all cynical and angry and full of bile, and then you turn into a bear, and then you become the thing that you hate most. And, and then you apply to, work. you apply to work for Capcom, and they see that you're a bear and just think you're in. You get paid in honey. 
I think we should probably start wrapping up. I think so. So, yeah, we have moved. So um, it's now no longer bringohurry.blogspot.com. It is now bringohurry.podbean.com. Not much of a difference, but that's where we are but now. But that'll be hosting podcasts on there and also just any random stuff, that blogs. That's the whole thing. And you've been set up for access for that too, so I don't have to do all yes. the writing for everything. Yeah, because you never did considering it. Considering I don't really write, so the, yeah. I just sort of put my hands in paint and splat them on the wall. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Actually, I'm impressed that you went with paint because I thought you were going to go more disgusting than that, so well done. Oh, I also write with my willy by drawing in the snow. <laughs> Wrong end, as far as what I thought you were going to go with, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> YouTube channels, Flick FFXI. I apologise for the ads. His is Blighty Warrior. <laughs> that was very subtle that you just <clears throat> apologise for the adverts. <clears throat> yep, and you can also um, email us at bringohurry at gmail.com. Please do. Yeah, no, but- I, I miss not getting that many emails. It's um, It's a bit depressing. Yeah. Said first. You hear that, Noodles? He expects three. Yep. Or else I'll kill you. I heard you press stop. No, no, I haven't stopped yet. Oh. Considering going to the shop to buy a cucumber and some lube and some sweeties. <laughs> now you've pressed stop. <laughs> <laughs>